it, it's nice to see you both. It's nice it's to nice see you too. <laughs> Tell us, Will Nana, how it, uh, I know it started with school. You started writing at school and a teacher noticed you. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. When I was uh, seven, I wrote, I was still planning on being a surgeon, but we did this free write and um, I wrote this thing that was about 10 to 12 pages long, which was actually longer than most of my, my classmates. And my teacher was like, I really enjoyed reading it. It was one of the more fascinating things I've ever read. I just want you to know that there's such a thing called a plot. And um, <laughs> if you could just learn what to do with a plot, you would do it much better. And so, of course, you know, me, I'm like, oh, let's research what plot means. And, you know, my teacher gave me praise. And so I went headlong into it. And then your parents um, liked that as well, didn't they? They supported you into writing. Um, that, that must have meant um, a lot for you. To fa the fact that your parents were proud of you to do uh, what you were doing in your writing. Yeah, and that, um, actually both of our dads were poets. Yeah. Yeah, they're not poets that like publish books, but they write poetry. Yeah. So my dad was absolutely over the moon. And he yeah. was like, my daughter's a poet! And so am I! I was like, oh, great. <laughs> you two said your dad was a poet then? Your dad's a poet. Uh, he's so funny. Dad, a poet too. Yeah, her dad's, her dad's a poet. And it was really hilarious. Because he said, well, at least that's something you got. I was a little oh afraid God. there for a minute. Because you just, you just remind me of your mom. So, whew, you got something for me. All right, that's me. That's me. I, 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 he can write, that's me. That's me. Did, did you know each other by then, or was it after? Oh, oh, God. We've been friends forever, and then a day, and probably add a couple of years on it. And then that's how long we've been friends. We've been friends since we were very small. So we, yeah, I am actually Winona's first beta reader, as most people know. So <clears throat> when they when people go, oh, so do you um, help Winona when she writes her stories? I was like, my hands uh, always have been in her stories. Like, that joke doesn't land. I know you, and that's funny, but this is what you meant to say. But you didn't want to, write, to be a writer at first, did you? Oh, no, I, I, I'm an avid reader. I've been reading for a long time. Um, is that true? You read 10 books a week? Yeah, roughly, eight, maybe 14. It depends. It depends. Oh, my God. I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. Because I am one of those people, I always have books going, right? So people, um, especially when I work, like I, I do listen to a lot of audio books because mm -hmm. that really helps. You know, I like, I want to read the book, don't we? But I have, to, I have to work at some point, right? I have to put out some <laughs> poetry and, and do some and office stuff. So I do listen to audio books a lot. And then I do have books that I just read. read so so from, what, what happened from there then? Well, at first, I'm going to explain about my business sense before you tear me up <laughs> and explain how you beat my all my all. <laughs> she beat out all the odds by making a suggestion, but I'm going to explain quickly how I started with genre. I was in genre and I was writing and I would write in, I hand wrote a, a book every couple of months at that point. And so I, I produced maybe four a year, three or four a year. It took me a while but um i would give them to people to read and they liked them and so they would give them to other people to read and then after a while i recognized i wasn't getting my notebooks back so i charged people money to read my books and so i did that and then when i was uh, around 15 i decided i wanted to do a book a, a book a week yeah so i came out with almost 52 books in a year it was a lot of work but um it worked out great so it went so my books would go from me when i finished writing to the people in high to uh, in middle school and high school that were my because she was in middle school so i had fans in middle school and high school and then after it came back to me it went i would start mailing it to the people who wanted to read it up and down the east coast of the united states and then it would come back and then that just went into a drawer so it was, it was really funny because she would charge five dollars to read her notebook and she would hold it and then you give it back and she would give you three dollars back and she would keep two exactly so she could buy new notebooks exactly and then i could write the next story and i had lots of pens and so that worked out great um but uh i'm not as good of a genre writer as i am a poetry writer so jay 
proceed to tell that story about how you gave suggestions that beat the odds. Absolutely, I will totally proceed to tell this story. Y'all listen up. Yo, know, you have to, you have to you listen up. Yeah, yeah, because you know, when you're a best friend and you win, I mean, you totally win. Doesn't happen to me often, y'all. So let me just, let me just bask in this glory. So <clears throat> one day we were heading to the Eastern Shore of Maryland, going down um, Route 50, we we're going to Ocean City, little day trip, right? Great times. And I said, you need to return to poetry because your, your poetry is so beautiful. And I love to read your poetry. I mean, I love your genre too, but I love your poetry. And she looks at me and she's like, oh, so you just want me to be poor the rest of my life. Thanks, bestie. Basically like that. Like, thanks, bestie. Just let me be poor. And I said, no, I think we can just do it. And she was like, well, if I was going to write a book of poetry, what would it be called? And I was like, and I thought the voice was bad. With a, and then, yeah. And, and she's like, all right, well, we're going to do this thing. And then we kept meeting people along the way. And that's how the and I thought ladies got started. And <laughs> yeah, I, w I was. Uh, th thank you, th thank you for for bringing that actually, because the first one was called, and I thought uh, uh, divorce was bad. Is that the first one? Yeah. yeah. So um, I don't know which. That's it. Can Can you show it a bit more? Can you show yeah. it a bit yeah. more? Yeah. yeah. Here you go. So I would like my first question about this book is: which one of you was married, and which one of you divorced? She's divorced. Okay. And it was really hilarious because that's what oh, I was, was it? <laughs> and it was hilarious. Not her divorce was hilarious. Oh, no, it was my just, divorce was hilarious too. <laughs> but um, it was hilarious on, <laughs> she thought like divorce was bad, right? And then it was like the people and the guys that she met yeah. after divorce, we were like, oh, dude, I thought you couldn't get worse than your, I, I, you keep, I you keep had, meeting them. Yeah, I had a horrible marriage. Right, and so I said, I didn't think you could meet someone jerkier than your ex-husband. And wow, wow, did you prove me wrong. Yep. And like every time we went anywhere, I'd be like, wow, this is crazy. He's worse than the last guy, thanks. <laughs> it's an amazing than... idea. So um, I, in this book, actually, it was written by four of you, isn't it? It's, uh, if I can't, you know, stop me if I'm wrong. It was uh, Alexi Rose, uh, Jed D. Uh, yourself and Linda. So this book, um, this book was really like straight away, wasn't it? How did it? What, what was the story of this book when it came out? Ooh. So I think we got one of um, my my dad actually <laughs> gave it to a couple of his friends, and and they said, "Oh, well, tell your daughter this is a great book. It's not going to be. It's not people aren't going to understand its worth until maybe maybe the next generation." You're like, that's the way of great books. Like, people don't understand it until the next generation. And then a lot of people have told us, like, a lot of men, Hi. a lot of men, they, they have told us, well, it helped me understand what was going on in, in, my, in my wife or my girlfriend or my daughter's head. Yeah. So thanks for writing it in a way that we would read it. Yeah. So this book, actually, it was, um, how we met the people that wrote on it was really weird because she told me to write. And then I was like, mm, I can do about 60 some poems a week. And so that's what I did. Not good poems, just poems. And I was like, look, book done. And then we ran across, um, actually, Shelby is on here too. Yeah, Shelby. Yeah. We ran across Lynn. Shelby and she was doing something and she had just started writing poetry and her poetry was astoundingly good. And then Lynn. And then we came across Lynn who had just came back from New York to help out her mom. And she just had, we just happened to pop by one day. And then Alexis. And there we were. And then Alexis rose because <laughs> we were both divorced and we both had horrible marriages. It's something to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> so we were like, we're gonna write a little bit about this. So there we go. And that's why I up thought divorce was bad with other life lessons, because some of us are not divorced. And then, yeah. and Shelby had been married for a very long time. Yeah. And so she was like, um, I'm not divorced, though, so, with so other life lessons. It was kind of cool because the book did not just represent divorce, women, or love, or relationships. We have a, a woman who was in her 50s, and at the time, she was just becoming an empty nester. Uh, and she'd been married for multiple decades. And then we had a woman that was um, in her 20s and she had just decided to, to settle down and look for the right person. Yeah. And then we had a newlywed and me and Alexis, who were the divorcees. Right. And it, so it was very interesting because it, it just uh, it spanned, it spanned generations. And it, it was very nice how it came together because it spanned generations. And then so the life lessons in here, great story. 
this is why everyone, every writer needs beta readers, right? So we gave it to our beta readers and they read it and they said, well, we wish it was like a common thread that kind of pulled me up along. Like it was a good book, but it was a little confusing in parts because I didn't understand why it was there. This poem was there and this. And so they was like, if we could just have like a, con- like a little thread that, that pulled us along and moved the story along and hence life lessons were born. And then, the, and then after that, you decided to make the series out of it. You did, um, and I thought being grown up was easy. Can yeah. can we have that one as well? And I thought being grown up was easy. And there you go. Excellent. And, and then you did, and I thought I did my journey alone. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. That was not here. Yeah, that was, that was yeah. not here. Yeah, and it was really interesting because when we first started, we were like, "This is like a one and done book. Like we're just doing this one book of poetry and short stories." Actually, we like to call them literary life guides with pop poetry. <laughs> anyway, uh, we were like, we're just gonna do one, and and person was like, "No." But we were on a, an interview, interview with someone from England, and they were like, "No, this is like chicken soup for the soul. You're gonna do so many," and we were like, ah, "We're doing one." one. <laughs> <laughs> and every time we come out with a new in a bottle right every time we go with a new book like the the person that interviewed us like emails us and said mm-hmm. just one book just, just one, one book <laughs> oh i think we're on like five of the series <laughs> but i like the and i thought being grown up is easy because it came from a very bad review of and i thought divorce was bad because some, uh, someone wrote a review was saying these ladies just need to smile more and be happy and have a positive attitude and what life would have worked out for them better and stop whining. And we went, huh? And then we were, we uh, recognized that she was a very young reader. She was like 19 years old. And we were like, oh, oh, it's just that life hasn't got you yet. Just wait for it. And yeah. so we were like, we need to write a book about that. We know that you met a, a TV, pro- we're going to talk about TV producing later on, but uh, you met a TV producer from LA, I think, that said to you, I think it was to you, Jade, that he said it, that writers are boring. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was in a conference and, and that lady did say, yeah, writers are boring. Nobody would ever want to know anything about writers' lives because they just sit behind a desk and write and drink, and that's what they do. And and that was, it was I think it was a con. I didn't understand yeah, because I don't cool. sit behind a desk and write, and that's all I do with my time. If but I we did, do drink, I but do not drink. necessarily behind our desk. We're normally on tour when we're drinking, but you. I do know. No. But we we're gonna come back to that because that's also um that's also amazing what you've done. I'd like to stay with the uh, and I thought books. So when you did uh, and I thought being grown up was easy, that was from the critics you received from the first book. Yeah. Okay, what is it about then? I wanted to we wanted our goal was to teach people that life does have challenges and setbacks but you can get through them and no not just the positive attitude is always going to carry you through and i think the real thread through this book is like this one has life lessons but this one right here is from my late mother my mother passed away and this is the actually the only book she's ever read that i read or written since i was seven (laughs) besides my seven-year-old book she read my seven-year-old book but this was the only one she's actually read it's funny when she finished, she said, mm, You don't write romance. And I'm like, No. She I said, never oh, did. For all these years, I thought you wrote romance. Oh. Yeah. Yes. But anyway, the point of my story was that we used her recipe in there. So instead of having life lessons or sections or chapters, we have steps on how to make her biscuits. Which are not cookies for you, English. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like true. More, more like scones. Yeah. They just wanted to say that. All right. And uh, so. After that, when you started growing as writers and authors, um, you decided to co-found uh, something for women. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. When did you when did you start this uh, this adventure? Well, we we started it three years ago. Right? Is it three? three three years ago? I think. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is our fourth. This is our fourth. Okay, four years. Yeah. Four years ago, it was just because you meet so many people, and they're just like, oh. I just did this because this was life and a job and the thing and you and you want to stop them and say hey no no because you did this I know you were carrying on with the business of what of life but because you carried on like I can now actually walk down there with with high heels on and not you know tennis shoes because you paved the way (laughs) it's not a dirt road anymore and we wanted people to stop and recognize how 
wonderful these people are. And if they hadn't done it, where would we be? And most of them, as we're saying, were behind the scene. Right. Behind the camera, behind, you know, behind the newspaper you're reading, behind the articles. They were behind the scenes. There were names that you just kind of like glazed over. So we wouldn't be like, hey, we see you. They were women managers. They were people that were making waves (laughs) before you even knew there was a wave to make. So the the, the idea came by uh, you meeting a lot of people and you wanted to highlight their career. Uh, that's, That's amazing. Was it before your TV show or after your TV show? When you started it was the show. Before, before the show. Um, okay. We had, the podcast, <laughs> we had the podcast for five years. Oh, can I tell my story? Wait, I just wanted to say. But I feel like I just talked. I've talking to my I, story. I just wanted to say that uh, <laughs> in another interview, we were talking about Winona is the ideas woman. Like she is the person that comes with the ideas. So she just said, no, no, no we're going to prove that wrong. I'm not boring. I have stuff to do. I have stuff to juggle. No, no. Really and did. we shot that show horribly by ourselves. And yeah. So it, it really happened when she just said, I'm not boring. The producer at the conference was like, oh, you know, writers are boring. And we went, mm. and I was fine with it because I already knew Hollywood felt that way. And then I, it really irked me for like seven days. So I called our then manager who had a background in film and she called some, and I figured, you know, two years from now, I'd have a show, and she called somebody, and uh, I called at 8 a.m. PST time. She called by 2 p.m. EST time, Eastern Standard Time, and uh, we had a show. Right. But the problem was we were, were not known, so we had to shoot it, produce it, edit it. We had to give a finished product. What she sold them was a finished product for them to air. And so in 30 days, we had to finish out an entire season. Say, so, I know, I know by knowing you, will know that, that that's something that won't scare you anyway. <laughs> because no. I know a little story. Uh, the little story is when you were uh, at the beginning of your career, you were ready to print your own books by yourself before Amazon was around. Is that right? You decided to print your books and to do everything by yourself. That is quite amazing, I've got to say, because um, he must have learned the craft from the beginning of actually publishing physically a book. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I will, I will tell you all like a little secret that we have actually learned. And we learned that actually from Winona doing all that pre work. If you are going to self publish your book, and you don't have to have white pages, have cream pages. Because every traditional published book have cream pages. Unless they're hardback. Unless they're hardback. But they normally have cream pages. They don't have white computer pages. So yeah, it was interesting to learn, like knowing that this is a 10 point glossy and what size to cut it to, um, knowing the type of glue to use for the back and um, how to get this actual book to hold together. Yes. And then we designed the front cover and everything. So yeah, and learning how to format it. It I was, was interesting. I'm not saying that we're the best books in the world. I'm not gonna lie to you. They weren't, they weren't great books, but I, it was enough that I had a few authors under me and then I learned how to set up your, a book tour. So for each of my authors, I was able to take their book on tour. It was a small tour, but it wasn't great. But yeah, from the beginning to the end, learning that, and then how to do your contracts and collect your money and pay your people. Yeah. So just in case anyone out here is thinking that their failures are, are do not speak to their future, that's not true. You, you, you start stuff, you do stuff, and you never know where that knowledge is going to land you. Like when you land somewhere, you're like, oh, I'm so glad I know all of this, because if I didn't know, I didn't do that back there, I'd be a fish out of water here. It's mm. very true. Thank you, Jade, for highlighting this. And then fast forward uh, many years later, then this producer says, okay, you have your TV show. <laughs> You're welcome to have it, but you shoot it, you produce it, you edit it. Is that right? Yeah. And you thought, I'm in. <laughs> right. Wait, wait, wait. So the learning curve was huge. Oh my <laughs> the- goodness. And, and our fans that watched it, it was so we would get emails. This show was better than the last one. Keep going, y'all. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. And we're here for you. And it was kind of nice. It was kind of a grassroots thing. Like 
to know that there were people here that when you told them, listen, it's a horrible shot, but you know, we're doing fun things, we're trying to learn, and people accepted it. <laughs> and then they said, great, I'm here for it. I show up every time one drops, I'm here for it. That was fun. And that was fun to see the numbers just grow. And they're like, oh, and I told my friends, and I told them, look, they, they shoot it horribly, the camera shakes, blah, 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 blah. But listen, episode four is better than episode one and episode six is the best of the whole season and the next season the first episode was really nice so there we go we're getting there <laughs> yeah did you stop it yeah no, the, yeah Christian. yeah the show is stopped and, and i i want to say that maybe just in time because it stopped in 2019 and we wouldn't have been going anywhere in 2020 so what would our show have no. been about 2018. It's not no, 2019. Oh, did it? It's oh, yeah, 2019. Right. The first, like the beginning of 2019. And how, like, we didn't see it as a blessing oh, then, God. but we see it as a blessing now. So, again, things that you don't understand are a blessing when you're standing in it. You know, like later, you're like, oh, this was a blessing. I, I just didn't know. Can I tell you a quick story about, um, of course, started? Because I don't think I've ever told this story before. So I'm going to try to tell it real quick. Anyway, so when we first started, we didn't quite, we called a production company and they told us that they were going to be like $20,000 a day. And we were like, yeah, no, not willing to make that type of investment right now off the bat. So we had to learn how to shoot it. And then I, we read about how to shoot it on an iPhone. So we started shooting it on the iPhone and the iPhone that we shot it on had an issue and it glitched and we lost all of our footage. Mm. So it was... We had been shooting for two weeks, so we had to go back and reshoot our entire show, so an entire season's worth of sh of shows in two weeks. Oh, wow. That was a learning curve, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, it was a learning curve. It was a learning mountain at that point. <laughs> several, several pots of coffee later for me, because we only can't have it, but it was several pots of coffee later, we are definitely, we were definitely like, okay, we can get this done. It, it was. Oh, by the way, I forgot to ask you a very important question, Jade. Have you had your coffee this morning? I have not. <gasps> I have not. Oh, no. <laughs> I have not. And I, I'm like, I hope it's not showing. Like, I have, I've been trying to just be like, it's okay. You can smell it, but you can't have it. <laughs> oh, no. I'm so sorry. I don't know how you do it. I can't live without coffee. I know, Winona. Winona, I've got a plan for you. When you two come to Paris, when COVID will be behind us, I will take you to a place they do the best hot chocolate. So, Ooh. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my <laughs> you created a magazine, haven't you? Yes. Oh, you've got it. <laughs> the 25 hottest indie authors, artists, and advocate magazine, and then the end, I thought literary magazine. That's amazing. So, when was it before the TV show or after the TV show? Do I no, uh, yeah, during, during the TV show. During just, the TV show. We never shot us doing, like, stuff with magazines. Like, for our TV show, we always shot stuff like, you know, getting ready for the red carpet or going places and flying. So you don't want to see what we do for our magazine. It's boring. <laughs> and we are not, and writers aren't boring. <laughs> writers aren't boring, but although putting together the 25 hottest, it's never boring, but it is tedious. It is tedious. <laughs> <laughs> it's your baby as well, isn't it? Your, yeah. Your, your, yeah. Yeah, it's our baby, and literally, I I sat down like the last week in December to start putting it together. So when everyone they're like, "So what are you gonna do over the Christmas holiday?" Work. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. Of course. <laughs> uh, when when is the next issue of your magazine? Um, when will it be the next issue? Oh, um, the twenty five hundred. Huge. And it's it comes out event. once a year, so, so a year. it's March every so March twenty twenty one. It'll okay. be out. So and I, actually, I'm so preparing. Like, I'm you, gearing up for like sitting down because December is is upon us, right? So I'm gearing up to be sitting on down and starting magazine. So I apparently have lost my mind because when I when we come out <clears> with <throat> this magazine, mm -hmm. you know the awards that you just talked about, it comes out on the same day. So we do okay. The in the okay. Yeah time and they come out on the same day so while she's in december doing the magazine i'm helping her and then i'm doing i'm getting the, the board together getting the votes together finding the awards for the award ceremony because they come out in women's month in the united states it's women's month in march um 
before I ask uh, how people can reach uh, your books and your podcasts and everything, I would like individually, if you could give an advice to writers that are listening to us today. Um, I'll start with you, Winona. What would be your piece of advice that you would give to, uh, to someone who wants to write books and publish books? I want to never give up because I've been around since I was 10 years old. I got published at 10, so I've been around for a while and we just got, I just got the success I want. So never give up. And you might have to find in, in ingenious ways to not just go around, not just like open the door, but go around the door to get into where you want your dreams. Mm, thank you. How about you, Jade? Um, my advice is always to get you a, a person like Wilnona, <laughs> right? Because I wouldn't be on this writing journey if she didn't make me. And it's not a bad thing to have a friend that pushes you because they see the greatness inside of you, right? So they're, they're pushing you because they want you to see it, see what they see. So get a Wilnona or someone like her or find a, a writer's group that will push you to be a good writer and and just like she said sometimes it's not the most conventional way it's i find it quite beautiful you two the dynamic you've got between you two i mean it, it's a uh, does it not work like if one of you doesn't feel and feel a bit low the other one is there for the other one or absolutely it does work like that and i and we talk about this all the time because everyone said how do you do this like partners and stuff because you have to recognize what you are strong what, what your qualities your strong qualities are and then what the other person's strong qualities are right and that's that's just how it works so Wilnona is very great at thinking outside of the box <laughs> I'm very great at being like hmm well what's that detail again she's like she's the dreamer and I'm like what's the detail yeah and then we both admit that sometimes we don't know all the stuff right so then you go to another person and then you ask them and don't but that, that's another piece of advice that is quite useful actually we don't have to know all the answers when we're on the path we when we're not supposed to know everything and if we don't know we ask don't we we ask how to do it and, and, and it doesn't make you a less of a person no say, i didn't know and i needed to know can someone please explain this to me that makes you a smart person because you're not banging your head against the wall. Exactly. Like, where can we, where can we reach you? Where can we order your books? Well, actually, on Amazon.com, uh, all your books are there. On there. Yeah, they, they are there, and Barnes and Noble also. And I guess I can feel it like I'm going to wrap up my my own show. Right? You can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. I've said that a couple hundred times, right? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much both for, for, for this interview. That was beautiful. Um, and I hope I see you soon on the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bet it feels good, doesn't it? It feels good. <laughs> it's so great. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs>